Hello again, it's your friendly heavy physics teacher. Hi. And um, we're here with a new lesson for my college physics and regents physics students. And this is the first lesson of the new unit for each of them for college physics. This is going to be unit 11. Um, and we're going to be talking about light as a wave. And you can't talk about light without talking about the electromagnetic spectrum, okay? Uh, for the Regents Physics class, this is your unit 12. This is uh, our first lesson for this unit. Um, this also happens to be one of my favorite units to teach, just because light, in many ways, is, is really, really cool to talk about, okay? All right, so. Some definitions, and then I'll get into my side stuff. <clears throat> All right, light. Light is the part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we see with our eyes. No, we don't hear with our eyes. I get it, okay? But it's the part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we perceive, we experience with the organ on our body that happens to be our eyes. Okay, interesting weirdness. Light, the stuff that we see, is only a small, small, small fraction of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. All right, so light is a vibration of an electric and magnetic wave. All right, well, because it's that, any other electric and magnetic wave isn't light, such as radio waves, such as an x-ray, such as the UV light that causes our skin to tan, or if it's the right frequency and wavelength, can actually cause deterioration of the skin. Okay? Um, so, the electromagnetic spectrum is the entire range of electromagnetic waves, um, which is electromagnetic energy that is the vibration of the electric and magnetic fields affecting a medium. Okay, so what does that mean? All right, light is an electromagnetic wave. An electric magnetic wave is a vibration of an electric field and a magnetic field that propagates through a material or through a space where no material is, all right? If there's an electric field and if there's a magnetic field, then you can get waves to move through it as long as you have some form of charge that got wiggled over there and that wiggling over there is going to make the nearby electric and magnetic field change, and that change propagates through space and will cause change over here, as long as there's another charge to experience it. Otherwise, it just keeps going through space, okay? And until it interacts with another charge, you don't know it's there, okay? It also has to be just the right wavelength, just the right frequency of vibration to create an effect that will change the charge. That will become more apparent as I start describing the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. So these things right here, at some point deep in the past, uh, living organisms um, became sensitive to the wavelengths uh, from 675 nanometers about to about 380 nanometers about. Um, this range of wavelengths, this group of frequencies that's associated with those wavelengths became very important for living organisms to use as energy, to perceive, and to uh, 
make adjustments to their behavior in the environment. Now, in the beginning, it was all bacteria, okay? Um, interestingly enough, chlorophyll, the stuff in plants, the stuff in autotrophs, acts as a catalyst for the ability of molecules to absorb light energy, particularly those wavelengths of light energy. Store it and then use it uh, at another time. And with that particular um, grouping of the electromagnetic energies, it became more important for living organisms to utilize that particular small group of that part of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Eventually, it became so important that uh, biological organisms evolved these, okay, so that uh, the the parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that got bounced around particularly usefully in those wavelengths became particularly useful to us gaining information about our surroundings. And so that's why that is the part of the electromagnetic spectrum that is most important for the human species. And yet, we directly experience two other parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Directly experience, okay? I dare you to put your hand in an oven and not experience that oven if it's on. You may not see anything. You may see an orange glow. You may see flame. But the part of the electromagnetic spectrum that has a whole lot more energy being given off by an oven is the infrared. Our skin is particularly good at experiencing those wavelengths. And so we feel warmed when we are experiencing infrared radiation. We feel cold when the available infrared radiation is not there and our body is emitting that infrared radiation out into space, okay? The other part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we experience directly and we, notice, we can notice an immediate change in our body is the ultraviolet, okay? If we get too much ultraviolet absorption by our skin, our skin attempts to protect itself. One, changing color. Two, it becomes injured. It becomes red, all right? And so physically, that absorption of the ultraviolet is a direct result of the ability of our skin to experience those really, really short wavelengths that we can't see, but still affect us directly, okay? X-rays, okay? We can experience them directly. How do we know? We go to a doctor if we break our bones, okay? The x-rays, most of them whew, pass through the body. Ah, but certain parts of the body are more dense than other parts. And so they'll pick off some of those waves going through your body and they won't be absorbed by the, the uh, charge couple device or photographic film in the old fashioned x-rays. And so that's what leaves the image that you see with the x-ray, okay? Gamma wavelengths, really nasty stuff because those wavelengths are so short that you've got millions of them going through you right now. But one, one is enough to change an atom. X-rays will change molecules. Ultraviolet will change molecules. Visible light? makes you look pretty. Infrared makes you feel warm. Radio waves don't even bug you. They're too long wavelength to even interact with you directly. Okay? Microwaves are weird. Microwaves are just the right wavelength to resonate water molecules and other certain molecules. And so if you experience microwaves, you might experience some thermal uh, stuff, which is one of the reasons why you can't operate a microwave oven with the door open, because it will 
cook you. It can cook the water that's in you, and that will cook your tissue. All right? Doesn't give you cancer. All right? Uh, more on that cancer issue in later lessons. All right? So, I need you to be looking at, put in front of you right now, the um, reference tables that I've sent you. Uh, we're going to use the Regents reference tables, whether you're in college physics or Regents. We're going to use the Regents reference tables because they have the table of the electromagnetic spectrum that I need you to be referring to as we talk about the parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay? Okay. We can generally divide the electromagnetic spectrum into these categories. Okay? And then there are like subcategories within them. And you can see those on the reference table. Okay, so um, the longest wavelength, the lowest frequency electromagnetic waves that are the electromagnetic spectrum are radio wavelengths. Okay, and look at the orders of magnitudes for those wavelengths. Look at the order of magnitude for the frequencies. The order of magnitude for the wavelengths is kilometers. All right. It does go down into meters, all right, 10 to the zero meters. And it does, some of these radio waves can be as short as centimeters. But all, most often we talk about radio waves as having a wavelength greater than one meter, which means that the frequency is going to be approximately 300 million vibrations per second, or 300 megahertz, okay? Microwaves. Microwaves are have their own separate category because they can be generated with the electronics that make radio waves, but they can also be generated with some um, very low-frequency molecular vibrations, okay? Um, now, Remember that with radio waves, we're talking slow vibration, a slow vibration for a radio wave, 300 million vibrations per second. That's slow. A slower radio wave might be 60,000 vibrations per second or 60 kilohertz. Okay? So those are slow vibrations of the electromagnetic waves. 300 million vibrations per second is slow. Kind of weird, huh? Microwaves, all right? Now we're talking about a million vibrations per second, 2 million vibrations per second, 50 million vibrations per second, 300 million vibrations per second, okay? All right, moving up from that, we have the infrared segment of the electromagnetic spectrum, okay? This includes heat. Heat is, can generally be thought of as the longer wavelength versions of the infrared, but the infrared also goes up to wavelengths that are just below what we can perceive with our eyes. The remotes that you use for your TV, those are infrared. Those have wavelengths on the order of 2 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, okay? So we're looking at 1.5, uh, 150 trillion, 150 trillion vibrations per second for the electromagnetic fields with an infrared remote, okay? Visible light, you can see how small, if you look at the reference table, how small the visible light segment of the electromagnetic spectrum is. And yet, for us, it's one of the most important forms of the electromagnetic spectrum that we perceive our world and our universe with, the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum, okay? Wavelengths from 675 nanometers, very long red wavelengths, to up around 380 uh, nanometers okay um and then the corresponding frequencies for that 
something like 444 uh, megahertz um, for the red red wave red wavelengths all the way up to I think it's uh, off the top of my head like 780 megahertz um, or yeah mega giga giga gigahertz okay um, I'm, my notes aren't right here in front of me so I'm having trouble with my abbreviations. I apologize to those of you out there in uh, science world uh, critiquing these, okay? Ultraviolet, okay? Ultraviolet is everything from what we can just barely perceive to deep into some very short wavelength uh, wavelengths that can affect the um, atoms that move around, or the, I should say, affect the electrons that move around an atom, okay? Really, really short wavelengths. X-rays, even shorter wavelengths, okay? Gamma waves, which is the, the last part of the, the spectrum that we're gonna be uh, strongly concerned with. There is another category of really super short, really, really high energy, really, really high frequency uh, waves they call cosmic waves. Um, but cosmic waves also, uh, they, they often include the super high energy particles um, that are given off by exploding stars and stuff. And so cosmic radiation uh, is part of here, but uh, it, it gets to the point where when we start talking about cosmic radiation, we're looking at light as a particle. <laughs> We get into some real weirdness. Once you get beyond X-ray and up into these, once you get beyond UV and up into this, this part of the electromagnetic spectrum, we can no longer use just the wave model to describe what happens when these parts of the electromagnetic spectrum interact with matter, okay? And that's a whole different unit. That's a whole different area of physics. And maybe we'll get to it this year. If we don't, <clears throat> One more strike against coronavirus for me. Okay, now, all of these parts of the electromagnetic spectrum in a vacuum move at the same speed. And uh, with the, the greatest level of precision that we've been able to achieve in modern times, uh, we consider this to be an exact value for the speed of light. 299,792,458 meters per second. Okay? Yeah, okay, that's, that's a lot of digits to remember. And for our purposes, we rarely use nine significant digits to, to do any of our work. So to three significant digits, we're going to use this number right here. All right? 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, all right? That corresponds to, that's another way of saying 300 million meters per second. Or you could think of it as 300,000 kilometers per second, all right? Um, and we want to get really weird. It's like 671,000, no, 671 million miles per hour, all right? Yeah, um, if you were to travel at speed, you travel 93 trillion kilometers in a year. Yeah, that's a light year, by the way. Okay, so the entire electromagnetic spectrum in a vacuum, all parts of it, all parts of it, radio waves, visible light, UV, microwaves, heat, gamma waves, cosmic rays, um, X-rays, you name it, all parts of the electromagnetic spectrum move at this speed in a vacuum, okay? When it encounters a physical medium, it slows down, all right? So, and then different frequencies within, different wavelengths within the, uh, within the spectrum will be affected more strongly by different mediums. And so there will be a slightly different speed for the different frequencies depending on its level of interaction with the medium, okay? 
But for our purposes, in a vacuum, 300 million meters per second. In air, it's only 90,000 uh, meters per second slower. All right? Subtract that. Subtract 90,000 from this number. Does that change this up here? So air, it is a change when we're talking about large distances. It's not significant when we're talking about distances between you and me, distances between our telephones, okay? So the transmission time between my telephone and your telephone, if we're texting each other, faster than that snap, okay? But if we're talking about the transition from here to a satellite and back down to Earth, oh, that's 0.3 seconds. That takes approximately 0.3 seconds for global communication to occur, all right? You gamers out there, you know what that's called, all right? That's the lag in the game. That's how long it takes your signal to go from your computer through the electronics to the server and back to your computer to tell you what's going on. And that's why you get that so many microsecond lag, all right? Um, so that's what we have. Speed of light is the speed of electromagnetism. So we're on our way, okay? Light, one part of the electromagnetic spectrum, just one small, less than 1% of the electromagnetic spectrum, okay? All electromagnetic waves travel at the same speed in a vacuum, 300 million meters per second. The only thing that really differentiates the waves is their frequency and wavelength, okay? And so what differentiates a radio wave from a microwave, from an infrared wave, from visible light waves, from ultraviolet light, from X-rays, from gamma rays, is what frequency and what wavelength they are vibrating the magnetic and electric fields. Thank you very much. This has been your friendly heavy physics teacher. Uh, one more time. Um, and we've been talking about light. Have a great one. See you soon.